Hello. Uh, the other day I was playing about with some crossovers and I wanted to sketch the schematics of these to see how they actually behaved. Um, what I realised though is that I didn't know the values of any of the inductors on these uh, devices. So that got me thinking as to how to measure inductance. So I've got a few inductors here. These are ones culled from various devices that I have lying around. And um, they've got a few things written on this. This is 0.58 uh, millihenry. This one here is 4.3 millihenry. And this one says 070, which I believe is probably seven microhenries. Uh, but we will check that later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and measure these, first of all, using something like this. Uh, a lot of you will have one of these component testers. They're not amazing, but they work pretty well for this kind of thing. Uh, and then I'm going to show you a different method of measuring these, the inductance of these things uh, using an oscilloscope instead. So if you happen to have an oscilloscope and a function generator, then you can do it that way. So let's start off by just checking the values on here are actually correct. So let's start off with this one here. This one should be 0 0.58 millihenries. So let's put it in a device here. Okay, and let's see what we get. Okay, so we're getting 0 0.53 millihenry. So that's pretty close. So let's make a note of that, shall we? So on the thing here, it says 0 0.58. And on the meter here, it's saying 0 0.53. Okay, let's try uh, the other two as well. So let's take this out. Now this one should be uh, 0 0.43 millihenries. Let's see if that is in fact the case. So again, let's switch this on. And here we get 0 0.42. So the marking on this one is 0 0.43 millihenries and the meter is reading it as 0 0.42. Okay, so the final one is this little tiny inductor that I found. I think this was in an old uh, little power supply. So let's plug this one in, see what this room comes up as. The leads on this one aren't particularly long, so hopefully this will read correctly. Okay, and let's give this one a test. Ah, this is actually coming up as a short, so it could be that the inductance of this is just too low for it to read. Let's try that again. Yeah, it's coming up as a 0 0.23 ohm resistor. So the marking on it says 0, 070, so that should be um, 7 microhenries, I would think, from the size of this. Um, the meter, though, can't get a reading from that. So what we'll do now is uh, we'll move over to the scope and the function generator, and I will show you how you can use that uh, to take these measurements, and we'll, we'll see how close they are. So the first thing we need to work out here is the output impedance of our function generator. Now, the manual for this function generator um, says that it's 50 ohms plus or minus about 5%, but just be on the safe side, we should check that and see what we actually get. Uh, so a simple way of doing that, I've got this set to a one kilohertz um, sine wave, three volts peak to peak, and we can see that on the screen on the oscilloscope there. That's the unloaded voltage, so we're getting three volts peak to peak. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna load it. So we're gonna put a resistor across the function generator. So let's just disconnect this for a moment. And let's take our resistor just here. It doesn't really matter what the value of the resistor is. What we're going to do, we'll, check, we'll measure it in a moment and make sure that it's, um, see what the value actually is. Okay, and then let's clip on our probes again and see what we get now. Okay, so we're now recording 2.4 volts peak to peak. So we went from 3.06 to 2.40. So I'm gonna make a note of that because that's gonna be useful in a minute. Uh, we also need to check the value of this resistor. So let's do that. I'm just gonna measure it using the multimeter just here. And we get 178.2 ohms. So make a note of that as well. Now what we've basically done here is made a voltage divider with the 50 ohm impedance inside the signal generator and the external 180 ohm resistor that we just used. Uh, from that, we can use the straightforward voltage divider equation uh, to work out what the actual input impedance, sorry, output impedance of the signal generator must be. 
So the next thing we need to figure out is the inductance of our inductors. So let's start off with uh, this one here. This one's marked as 0.3 millihenries. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set our function generator here to about 20 kilohertz. So let's start by doing that. And I'm just going to leave it on 3 volts peak to peak for the moment. That's absolutely fine. Then what we're going to do is connect our inductor across the function generator here. And then we're going to connect our probe from the oscilloscope across that. Now we can see that the amplitude has actually changed. It's gone from 3 volts peak to peak to about 2.4 volts, volts peak to peak. And that's because we've loaded it by using this inductor. So what we're then going to do is reduce the frequency from our function generator just here until the peak to peak voltage gets to be exactly half what it was initially. So it was initially 3 volts peak to peak. Uh, it's currently reading 2.24 volts peak to peak. So let's drop this down. And as we drop down the frequency, we should see the amplitude of this wave drop as well. So let's mark it down. Remember, we're looking for about 1.5 volts. Okay, so we're on about 1.48 there, I think, which is pretty close. Um, let's just see if we can get it any closer. So we're on 3.08, so we're looking for 1.54 which is about there. Okay, and the frequency we've got there is uh, well, 10,600, so it's 10.6 kilohertz. So let's make a quick note of that. Okay, let's try our next inductor. So we'll reset this back to 20 kilohertz again. And let's swap our inductor out. This time we're going to try the 0.58 millihenry inductor. So just like before, let's put it across our function generator. Let's attach our probes. And just like before, we're going to slowly uh, reduce, so we're going to change the frequency here on the function generator. So it's currently at 20 kilohertz. And remember, we're looking for exactly halfway again. So it was 3.08, so we're looking for 1.54. So let's drop this back down again. It's 1.5. 1.54 is about there. And this time I've recorded 9.3 kilohertz. OK, back up to 20 kilohertz again. Now let's try our tiny little inductor. Let's try the small one we found earlier, the one that we couldn't get a reading from, from our component tester. So let's put that into the circuit. Okay, so our smaller inductor is in there. Now, because this has got a, a much smaller inductance than the other two, um, it means that we're gonna have to increase the frequency. So as soon as I put that in circuit, it actually dropped down the peak-to-peak -peak voltage to 180 millivolts. So remember that needs to be 1.54 volts. So let's start increasing the frequency. Now we can see it's going up there, it's 900 millivolts, 1.12 volts, looking for 1.54. Which is about there, and that's at 600 kilohertz. So let's make a note of that. So that is allegedly a 7 microhenry inductor. Okay, let's get back to the paper again and do some calculations, and we'll see what our results are. We need to figure out what the impedance of our signal generator, of our function generator, actually is. So we do that. Um, so RO, so the output resistance, um, is going to be equal to RL, which is the load resistor of um, V open over V load um, minus one. Okay, so let's put some numbers into there and see what we actually get. So our load resistor, um, if I remember rightly, measured as 178.2 ohms. Um, our initial V, so V when it was open, was a 3.08 and our V load was 2.40. Okay, and let's see what we get here. Okay. 
Okay, so it was pretty close. We get our load impedance, or sorry, our function generator impedance as 50.49 ohms. Now the final thing we have to work out is the inductance of our various inductors, and we can do that using the following equation. So L, the inductance, equals square root of one third multiplied by the output impedance, which are in cases 0.49 ohms, um, divided by 2 pi f. So this is how we actually work out our inductance. Uh, so let me just do that and uh, I'll get back to you. So you can see that the values are pretty close. So this one was 0.5 uh, millihenries compared to the meter that said it was 0.53 and the marking that said it was 0.58. Uh, this 0.43 millihenry inductor was pretty close. The meter was 0.42 and the scope said 0.44. And then the microhenry, sorry, 7 microhenry inductor, um, the scope recorded 7.7 .7 microhenries, uh, but I couldn't detect that at all using my component tester. So this is probably, this is the only way I could do this. And usually this is close enough. It doesn't normally have to be absolutely spot on. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, if you want to know the maths of where this actually comes from, I'll leave a link in the description, which kind of goes through all that and explains it. Other than that, I hope you found that useful and uh, thank you very much and see you next time.